Hello, my name is Rudy Nunez. I am a PharmD candidate, class of 2024. In this presentation, we will be discussing Bictarvi. Bictarvi is a combination product that contains Bictegravir, Emtricidabine, and Tenofovir alfenamide. Bictarvi is an oral single agent indicated to treat patients with HIV. It is a typical initial regimen for most patients. The goal of antiviral therapy is to provide potent, safe, tolerable, and easy to adhere regimen in order to achieve sustained virological control. Uh, typically with Bictarvi, we have three different drug combinations because of the risk for resistance to happen. And so if, if resistance does happen, it would be less likely for resistance to multiple mechanisms. And so combination products are typically initiated to, uh, with to patients with HIV and this has proven to be the best intervention for our patients. As some background information for HIV, about 35,000 new HIV infections were diagnosed in the US in 2019. According to the CDC, it is crucial for us to start HIV treatment as soon as possible so we can reach undetectable levels. 8 in 10 new HIV infections come from people living with HIV that are not currently taking treatment. And so it's important for us to intervene as soon as possible and to provide treatments so we can get our patients to be at the undetectable level. Uh, once they become undetectable, HIV transmission is not going to happen, but we do have to maintain that undetectable level with uh, concurrent treatments. Before we move on to the therapeutics of Bictarvi, I'm going to list some of the pharmacokinetics that are important for us to just keep in mind as we move on through this presentation. For absorption, Tmax with and without food for Bictegravir, also uh, the acronym is BIC, is two to four hours. For emtricitabine is about one and a half to two hours. And for tenofovir alfenamide, it's half an hour to two hours. Protein bound, Bictegravir is 99% protein bound, Emtricitabine is less than 4% protein bound, and Tenofovir alfonamide is about 80% protein bound. The half-life, Bictegravir 17.3 hours, Emtricitabine 10.4 hours, and Tenofovir about half an hour. Time to peak, 2-4 to four hours for Bictegravir. Uh, one and a half to two hours for emtocytabine and tenofovir about half an hour to two hours. In terms of excretion, bictegravir is excreted in feces about 60% and urine about 35%. Emtocytabine is excreted 13% in feces and 70% in urine. And tenofovir alfonamide feces is 30% and less than 1% in urine. For the mechanism of action, I'm going to have three different slides for this medication because it has three components. First, we will discuss on this slide Bictegravir. Bictegravir is an integrase inhibitor that inhibits HIV integrase by binding to the integrase active site and blocking the strand transfer step for DNA integration. Here on the image, we see that Bictegravir is that second red box. It's a little bit higher, but it is uh, blocking or inhibiting step four integration into the provirus. On this slide, we're going to discuss the mechanism of action of emtricitabine. Emtricitabine is a cytidine analog that interferes with HIV viral RNA dependent DNA polymerase activities results in inhibition of viral replication. In the image we see emtricitabine is also boxed off in red and it's inhibiting step three reverse transcription. In this third mechanism of action slide we are now going to discuss tenofovir alafenamide. It is um, converted intracellularly to tenofovir and then subsequently phosphorylated by cellular kinases to its active moiety tenofovir diphosphate. Its mechanism of action is to inhibit viral replication. In the image provided here, we have three different tenofovir formulations. 
Uh, again, just a reminder, tenofovir alafonamide is the formulation in Bictarbi. And as you can see in the image here, it is illustrating that tenofovir alafonamide, TAF, has better penetration into the lymphoid cells, the site of action of our antiviral uh, mechanism. It, it then results in increase in anti-HIV activity in phase one and decrease in plasma uh, tenofovir levels and here it says by 90 percent that then results in lower levels of tenofovir in kidney and bone tissue um, this results in its uh, better tolerability and better uh, potency now in this slide and moving forward we will discuss more of the therapeutics for victarvi Victarvi is indicated for HIV infection treatment. It is a complete regimen for patients who meet certain criteria, and the criteria are listed here. They have to be adults or pediatric patients greater than 14 kilograms with no antiretroviral treatment history. It could also be used to replace stable antiviral regimens in those who, have, who are virologically suppressed and this is, in quotations, HIV-1 RNA of less than 50 copies per ml of blood and no treatment failures in their history and with no evidence of resistance to any of the antiretroviral agents. Uh, some of the renal dosing listed here, um, if they have a creatinine clearance of greater than 30 ml per minute, there is no adjustment necessary. But if they have a creatinine clearance of less than 30, uh, milliliters per minute use is not recommended and this is per manufacturer labeling uh, for hemodialysis if it's intermittent we can administer the dose after the hemodialysis but if it's a per peritoneal dialysis uh, use is not recommended uh, for hepatic dosing if it's severe hepatic impairment uh, we do not recommend use for severe hepatic impairment we are considering child pew score of seven or worse. For the dosing for HIV infection it, as an oral treatment, we give one tablet. Uh, it's going to be Bictegravir 50 milligrams, Intracytabine 200 milligrams, and Tenofovir 25 milligrams once daily. And here we're going to stress on adherence. We're going to make sure a patient understands the importance of not missing a dose and the importance of maintaining uh, the viral suppression by keeping adherence as, as close to 100% as possible. For pediatric patients who weigh 14 to 25 kilograms, we can initiate with Bictarbi 30 milligrams, Entrocytabine 120 milligrams, and Tenofovir 15 milligrams per tablet. And again, it's going to be one tablet, once daily. Here we have the two different images of the 50 and the 30. And patients who weigh more than 25 kilograms, we could start with the higher dose, the Bictegravir 50, Emtricitabine 200, and Tenofovir 20 milligram tablets. Again, one tablet, once daily. And with, with that, the goal in mind of keeping it a simple to adhere regimen, so just one tablet, once daily. Some of the warnings and precautions prior to starting Bictarvi are to mention that it does have a U.S. box warning for post-treatment acute exacerbation of hepatitis B. Uh, we also should mention the immune reconstitution syndrome. Uh, patients may develop immune reconstitution syndrome that results in the occurrence of an inflammatory response to an indolent or residual opportunistic infection during initial HIV treatment. It could also cause an activation of autoimmune disorders such as Graves' disease, uh, Gilliam Barr, or autoimmune hepatitis. Uh, lactic acidosis is, is another concern, and or hepatomegaly. Lactic acidosis and hepatomegaly with steatosis, which is like accumulation of fat in the, in the liver. It can sometimes be fatal. It has been reported with use of nucleoside analogs alone, alone or in combination with other antiretrovirals. In terms of adverse reactions, we do and can see an increase in serum bilirubin in about 17% of patients. In about um, 1 to 10% risk, we will see 
um, patients experience skin rash, increased low density lipoprotein, uh, abdominal distension, pain, diarrhea, dyspepsia, flatulence, increase in serum lipase or serum amylase, nausea, vomiting. We can see an increase in liver enzymes. Um, we can also see abnormal dreams, depression, dizziness, fatigue, headache, insomnia, suicidal ideation, or tendencies. It is recommended to test for hepatitis B virus prior to initiation of antiretroviral therapy. Some of the more common monitoring parameters include maintaining a CD4 count and HIV RNA plasma levels. We are also going to monitor serum creatinine, estimated creatinine clearance, urine glucose, and urine protein prior to initiation, and then moving forward as clinically indicated during therapy. We can also monitor serum phosphorus if the patient has chronic kidney disease, and we should be monitoring hepatic function tests during therapy. We can also do bone density testing if the patient has a history of bone fractures or have risk factors for bone loss. So in the previous slide, I mentioned that a patient taking Victarvi should be monitored for their CD4 cell count. So here I wanted to just mention some more background information of what CD4 count relates. CD4 cells are active T cells in a patient's bloodstream. A normal cell count is between 500 and 1500 cells per cubic millimeter of blood. Uh, without HIV treatment, uh, HIV virus goes and infects these CD4 cells, and then as the numbers go down, we are the patient is going to be more likely at risk for developing serious infections and or cancers. Uh, as CD4 count goes below 200, then we have a diagnosis for HIV, HIV AIDS, and this is the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome and then the patient becomes at risk of developing uh, very serious opportunistic infections. Here we listed three, uh, pneumomucositis pneumonia, PCP, mycobacterium avium complex, MAC, and cytomegalovirus, CMV. And so uh, here we also noted that if your CD4 count falls below 200, your healthcare provider may recommend other antibiotics on top of Bictarv, the HIV treatment, to prevent some of these infections. Listed here are some drug-drug interactions with Bictarvi. Um, there is an antirhythmatic known as dofetilide, and it is actually contraindicated to start Bictarvi if the patient is currently stabilized on dofetilide. Uh, anticonvulsants, we have carbamazepine, oscarbazepine, phenobarbital, and phenytoin. We are going to consider alternative therapies. It is considered a more serious drug-drug interaction, and thus we shouldn't start unless it is um, one of our only choices. For antimycobacteriums, we are actually contraindicated with rifampin, and we are not recommended with rifabutin or rifapentine. For herbal products, we have St. John's Ward, and again, it's not recommended. For polyvalent cations, for polyvalent cations containing calcium, iron supplements, uh, cation containing antacids or laxatives, sulcrophate or buffered medications. Um, so if, if they have aluminum or magnesium, two hours before or six hours after. So just uh, give that buffer space between the medication. And then we also have, if, they, if they're taking something with calcium or iron, we're going to take it with food. If the patient is currently taking metformin, we're going to refer to metformin prescribing information. This slide marks the end of my drug information presentation on Bictarvi. And listed here are some of the clinical pearls that are going to be your take-home messages from this presentation. HIV treatment should be started as soon as possible. Um, Bictarvi is used to treat HIV-infected individuals, but it does not cure HIV, and it does not cure AIDS. Uh, it is provided as a once-daily dosing, and very important to express uh, the importance of adherence to our patients. And getting and keeping undetectable viral loads prevents HIV transmission. And finally, here are my resources. I wanted to 
Thank you for your time and attention in this drug information presentation.